All right, let's dive into AI today, specifically NVIDIA. Yeah. You know, you sent over some fascinating articles about NVIDIA and how their chips are impacting just about everything. Mm. Healthcare, self-driving cars, even gaming. What really stood out to me, I don't know about you, was their shift from being like, what, a gaming company? Mm -hmm. To being like this huge force in AI. Yeah. It really yeah. is a remarkable transformation. And it's like they reinvented themselves, right? Right. The key here is their move from mostly gaming GPUs to, well, developing chips specifically for AI, like their Tensor Core GPUs. Those are designed to handle, you know, the massive computational demands of all these AI algorithms. Okay, yeah. yeah. I remember reading about Tensor Cores, but honestly, I'm a little fuzzy on the details. Could you maybe break it down a bit yeah. for me and for our listener? Of course. Yeah. At its core is this concept of parallel processing. So imagine a single processor, right? trying to solve some complex math problems step by step. Now imagine, instead, thousands of specialized processors all working on different parts of that problem at the same time. That's parallel processing. That's what NVIDIA's chips can do. And these specialized processors, they're called CUA cores, they're designed to be really good at, well, the kind of math that makes deep learning possible. So it's like I don't know, a, a massive team of tiny mathematicians all working together. Exactly. Wild. Yeah. But how does that actually work in the real world? You know, I'm thinking about that healthcare stuff we mentioned. Absolutely. One of the articles you sent had this great example about how convolutional neural networks running on NVIDIA GPUs, they can actually analyze x-rays looking for signs of lung cancer. And they're more accurate than human radiologists. Really? What? Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's seriously impressive. So these chips, are they like, what, super-powered medical detectives? You could say that. But what does that mean for, like, the patients? It means faster and more accurate diagnoses, which can be life-saving. Imagine you're a patient. Instead of waiting weeks for a specialist, you get almost instant analysis from an AI that's been trained on millions of images. That's NVIDIA's chips at work. Man, that's amazing. Okay, but healthcare is just one piece of this whole thing, right? Yeah. I mean, your expertise is self-driving cars. Yeah. How are NVIDIA's chips changing that field? Well, NVIDIA's Drive AGX platform, it's like the brain behind a lot of these self-driving systems. It's a specialized computer packed with AI chips, and it processes information from the car's cameras, radar, all of it, in real time. So it's always analyzing the environment, you know, making decisions to keep the car safe. And the car has super fast reflexes. Yeah. Because of these chips. Yeah, yeah. And they're making waves in the gaming world too, right? Makes sense considering their background. Right. NVIDIA GPUs have always been the standard for good graphics, but now they're enhancing the AI in games, too. Those super lifelike characters you see in modern games, their behavior is often driven by really complex AI running on NVIDIA GPUs. So it's not just about making the games look good, it's making them smarter, more immersive. Exactly. And it's fascinating how those advancements, they actually impact other industries, too. Think about it. The algorithms that create those realistic worlds, they can also be used to train robots or even create virtual assistants that understand human emotions. Wow, that's really cool. So the line between the virtual world and the real world is getting blurrier. It is. But, you know, speaking of real world stuff, I was blown away by that article about finance. High frequency trading, risk assessment, all of it. It's mind boggling. Well, finance is all about data, right? And these chips are made to crunch numbers incredibly fast. Take high frequency trading, for example. Hmm. Algorithms making thousands of trades per second, analyzing the markets all faster than any human. It's a tough landscape. NVIDIA's tech is at the forefront of it. So no matter where you look, NVIDIA's chips are having this huge impact. But how do you choose the right chip for all these different applications? I mean, that seems overwhelming. It can be. There's a big range of chips, each one for different workloads. We talked about the A100 Tensor Core GPU. It's a powerhouse. But for really massive things, like those giant language models we hear about, you might need something even stronger, like the H100 chip. Ah, OK. So like choosing the right engine for a car, I guess. Depends what you're doing with it. Exactly. But those articles also emphasized how important software is. It's not just about the hardware. Absolutely right. NVIDIA software, things like CUDA and TensorArt, those are really important for developers. C is how you program all those CUDA cores so developers can use the full power of parallel processing. And then you have TensorArt. That's all about optimizing AI models so they run better and faster on the hardware. Gotcha. Okay, so we've covered the basics of how the chips work, their shift from gaming to AI, and how they're being used in healthcare, finance, everywhere. But what about the future? Those articles mention some pretty amazing things like AI and cloud services and the rise of edge computing. 
Is that where NVIDIA is going to be a big player? Absolutely. Cloud computing is already making AI accessible to businesses of all sizes. Imagine a small startup. They can rent access to a supercomputer filled with NVIDIA GPUs in the cloud. Wow. They can develop really sophisticated AI models without buying expensive hardware. That's incredible. So it's making AI available to everyone, democratizing it, right? Yeah, exactly. And then there's edge computing, which I find really fascinating. That's about bringing the processing power closer to the data, right? Exactly. Those self-driving cars, they need to make split-second decisions without relying on the cloud. Right. That's where edge computing comes in. NVIDIA's chips are designed to be powerful and energy efficient, perfect for edge devices, you know, like self-driving cars, robots, even smartphones. It seems like AI is going to be everywhere, from the cloud to our pockets. It's both exciting and maybe a little scary. It is a time of big change, but it's also a time of huge opportunity. And NVIDIA is right at the front of it, shaping the future of AI in ways we're only beginning to understand. So, you know, before we start this whole thing, you mentioned being interested in the global impact of AI. Now that we're this deep into NVIDIA and AI, what do you think about, you know, the really big implications? It feels like we're on the edge of something huge, but with anything this powerful, there are going to be challenges too, right? Yeah, you're right to bring that up. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement. But we have to consider the potential downsides, too. I mean, as AI gets more powerful and it's everywhere, we need to think about what it means for jobs, privacy, even society as a whole. Yeah. That one article about AI and inequality, it really hit me. The idea that these algorithms, if they're trained on biased data, could make those biases even worse. Unfair hiring, lending, even criminal justice. It's a scary thought. It is a serious issue. We need to develop these systems so they're fair, transparent, accountable. And a big part of that is making sure the data used to train them represents, well, all of us, different experiences, backgrounds, everything. So it's not just the tech itself. It's the data, the mm -hmm. people designing it, everything. We have to ask who benefits, who gets left behind. Exactly. And it's not just up to the tech companies to figure this out. We need a conversation as a society about what values we want in our AI. And this is where you, the listener, come in. By staying informed, asking critical questions, demanding responsible AI, you shape the future of this technology. That's a good point. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by all this, but knowing we have a voice, that's reassuring. <laughs> but let's get practical for a minute. What can people actually do to prepare for a future with AI. I know those articles talked about lifelong learning and being adaptable, but what does that look like, really? Well, first of all, I'd say embrace this idea of continuous learning. AI is moving so fast, what's new today is old tomorrow. You gotta stay up to date, read, listen, learn. Oh, I'm all about that. Articles, podcasts, online courses, you name it. Keeps the mind sharp, especially in this AI age. That's the spirit. And don't just focus on the technical stuff either. Think about the ethics, the social impact, the philosophical questions. It's a fascinating field. One article suggested that future jobs, they're going to need both technical skills and, well, human skills, creativity, critical thinking, things like that. How can people develop those alongside, you know, all the tech stuff? It's about finding ways to use those human skills in your work, no matter what you do. If you're a programmer, use your creativity to design interfaces that are, I don't know, intuitive, engaging, data analyst. Use your critical thinking to find insights the algorithms might miss. Find the things humans are still better at, even in this automated world, and be willing to adapt, learn new skills, new ways of working, because things are going to keep changing. Absolutely. The jobs of the future might not even exist yet, but the skills you build now, they'll be valuable no matter what. Remember, AI is a tool. We decide how to use it, what problems to solve, what kind of future we build. You know, something that really stuck with me from those articles was this idea of democratizing AI. It's not just for big companies anymore. With platforms like NVIDIA's and cloud computing, even small businesses, individuals, they can access this power. What do you think about that trend? Oh, it's exciting. AI's potential to solve problems, to create new things, it's not limited anymore. Anyone can use it. It makes me think about people starting businesses, creating new art forms, even addressing social issues in their communities, the possibilities are huge. Exactly. We're already seeing this happen. People using AI for personalized education, innovative healthcare solutions, even fighting climate change. You mentioned NVIDIA's platform earlier. Can you tell me more about that? 
How's it making AI more accessible? Sure. It's basically a set of software and hardware tools that makes it easier to build, train, and deploy AI models. Things like their CDA platform for parallel computing, TensorRT, which optimizes models, yeah. and their NGC catalog, which has pre-trained models you can customize. So it's like everything you need to get started with AI in one place. Exactly. It lowers the barrier to entry. Anyone with an idea and some coding skills can bring their AI vision to life. That's amazing. It's like giving everyone access to this incredible power. But with all this accessibility, are there risks? Could it be misused? Could it fall into the wrong hands? Those are good questions. Like any powerful technology, it can be used for good or bad. We need to be aware of the risks. AI for surveillance, misinformation, even autonomous weapons, those are serious concerns. That's definitely something to think about. It shows how important ethical guidelines and regulations are. Absolutely. We have to talk about these things openly and honestly and work together to create safeguards that protect people and prevent misuse. This reminds me of what you said earlier about staying informed. It's not enough to just see the good side of AI. We need to be aware of the risks and speak up when we see something wrong. I couldn't agree more. The future of AI, it's not set in stone. It's being shaped right now by our choices, our conversations, our actions. So it's not just about watching this happen. We need to be a part of it and make sure it leads to a future that benefits everyone. That's the idea. You don't have to be a tech expert to make a difference. Stay informed, ask questions, share your thoughts. That's how we develop and use AI responsibly. We've talked a lot about AI's potential and how NVIDIA's tech is, you know, pushing the limits. But let's get specific. In those articles you sent, there were some really amazing real-world examples of how AI is already making a difference. We were talking about healthcare before. Can you give us some more details about how NVIDIA is actually like improving people's lives? Well, one area that really comes to mind is medical imaging. You probably read about how AI is being used to analyze scans, like x-rays, MRIs, finding things the human eye might miss. A lot of those advancements, they're powered by NVIDIA GPUs. So it's not about replacing doctors, it's more like giving them a tool to be even better. Exactly. Imagine an AI on an NVIDIA GPU analyzing thousands of mammograms. It can flag the ones that look even a little suspicious. That doesn't replace the radiologist, but it helps them focus on the cases that need more attention. Wow, that saves so much time. And it could mean earlier cancer detection, which is you know so important for treatment. Mm -hmm. Are there other areas in healthcare where NVIDIA is making an impact? Oh, definitely. Drug discovery is another big one. Developing new drugs has always been, well, slow and expensive. But AI is speeding things up. Researchers are using AI running on NVIDIA GPUs to analyze huge amounts of data like molecular structures, and they can identify potential drug candidates, ones that might target specific diseases. So it's like having a digital assistant that can go through all that data and point scientists in the right direction. It's amazing how much faster that could make finding new treatments. But it's not just healthcare, right? You said AI is transforming agriculture too. Yeah, agriculture has some big challenges, feeding more people, climate change, the environmental impact of farming. AI is playing a key role in finding solutions. One of those articles, it talked about using AI to increase crop yields and reduce pesticide use. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. They were talking about drones with cameras and sensors collecting data about the crops. And then AI analyzes that data and tells farmers what to do. Exactly. A farmer could see like a detailed map of their fields, information on soil moisture, how healthy the plants are, even if there are pests. All that data analyzed by AI on NVIDIA's platforms, it helps farmers make better decisions about irrigation, fertilizers, everything. It's like a digital farm manager. That's incredible. What about the environment? How is AI making agriculture more sustainable? Well, one way is through precision agriculture. That's using tech to apply things like water, fertilizer, pesticides, only where and when they're needed. AI is a big part of it. <laughs> Forecasts to make really precise recommendations to farmers. So using AI to reduce waste, to make agriculture less harmful to the planet. Exactly. And beyond optimizing what we already do, AI is helping us come up with entirely new ways of farming, like vertical farming, growing crops indoors in stacked layers using LED lights in controlled environments. AI helps optimize those systems, controlling the lighting, climate, monitoring growth, even harvesting. That's wild. It's like bringing the farm inside and, you know, controlling everything perfectly. Mm. But it's not just healthcare and agriculture, is it? AI is also having a huge impact on, like, 
environmental conservation. Right. Those articles had some really inspiring examples. One that I thought was really cool was using AI to track endangered species and stop poaching. Yeah, I remember that one too. Using AI to look at images and videos from camera traps and drones to identify and track animals. Yeah, those AI systems, they can learn to recognize individual animals based on their markings, their patterns. They can track their movements over time, which gives conservationists really valuable data. It's like giving them super-powered vision to keep an eye on these animals over huge areas. And it's not just tracking animals, right? AI can monitor deforestation and other threats, too. That's right. AI can analyze satellite imagery and find areas where forests are being cut down illegally. That data can help authorities enforce the rules and protect those forests. It's incredible how AI can be used to protect both wildlife and the whole planet. And these are just a few examples. As AI keeps advancing, driven by companies like NVIDIA, I can only imagine what else we'll be able to do. Me too. We're really just starting to see what AI can do. The next few years are going to be fascinating. Well, this has been an amazing deep dive. We've covered so much. NVIDIA's journey from gaming to AI, the technology behind their chips, the ethical questions, and how AI is already solving real-world problems. But the most important thing is you, the listener, you have a role to play in all of this. Stay curious, stay informed, keep asking those important questions. The future of AI is in our hands.